Hello, I am Sunita. Welcome to my class. Here I am going to discuss Karnataka TET science topics according to the syllabus. Here the topic is light in that one refraction. This is the first class. This is the part one. Refraction. What is mean by refraction? Refraction is bending of light when it enters obliquely from one transparent medium to another medium. Refraction is nothing but when light travels from one medium to another medium, then bending of light takes place. That process we will call it as a refraction of light. Speed of light is maximum in vacuum. Its value is 3 into 10 to the power of 8 meter per second. Why the refraction? Why it will happen? Because change in speed of light. When light, when it travels from one medium to another medium, there will be a change of speed of light. Because of the speed of light, change in speed of light, refraction it will be occur. Speed of light in air is different. Speed of light in water is different. Speed of light is in vacuum is 3 into 10 to the power of 8. Therefore, there will be a change in speed of light in different medium. Because of this change, the refraction it will occur. Some of the example of refraction the bottom of swimming pool appears higher if you observe the swimming pool then you can observe you can identify the bottom of swimming pool it will appears raised but actually it will be not be raised but it will be appear raised due to the process of refraction the pencil of partially immersed in water appears to be bent at the interference of water and air if you dip a water if you dip a pencil in a water then how much pencil it will be immersed in water that much part it will appear bent due to the interference of water and air the refraction it will take place at the surface of water and air because the speed of light it will changes when light rays enters from water to air listen here if you immerse a pencil off of the pencil it is in water then this pencil it will appears bent if it if it is immersed in water because this it will occurs due to the presence of refraction here you can observe the light it will travel from air to water there will be a change in speed of light when it enters from air to water then bending of light it will takes place it is nothing but refraction due to the presence of refraction the pencil which is immersed in water it will appear bent the next one lemon placed in a glass tumbler appear big this you can do the experiment with your own take a glass of water then put a lemon in that tumbler then that lemon it will appear, appear big due to the presence of refraction then letter of a book appear to be raised when seen through a glass lab with the help of a glass lamp you see, if you see the letters then the letters it will appear raised up sometime it will appear even big also this also due to the presence of refraction law of refraction consider here consider this picture this is the incident ray after hitting this surface it will get refracted bending of light takes place because speed of light in air is different from speed of light in glass when there is a change in speed of light then you can observe the refraction process it will occur then here this is the normal normal is nothing but the a line imaginary line drawn perpendicular to the surface of the air or glass then here first one First one, first law, the incident ray, the refracted ray, the normal to the interference of two transparent medium at the point of incident all lie in the same plane. First law status that the incident ray, refracted ray, normal drawn at the plane of the two surface, then all they will, they will lie on the same plane. That is the first one. Then second law, snail's law. The ratio of sine of angle of incident to the sine of angle of refraction is a constant for a light of given color for a given pair of media. Here, this is the incident ray. This I it will indicate the I it will indicate the angle of incidence sine I. Then here, this R it will indicate the angle of refraction sine R. 
then if you consider these two ratios sin i divided by sin r always it will be a constant for a given color for a given pair of media it will be a, it, it will be a constant this status that this state the law of refraction second law of refraction these two laws you have to remember refraction refraction through a rectangular glass lamp let us discuss in detail how refraction it will occur in a glass lamp consider a glass lamp here a b c d then here if any ray falls on the glass lamp consider one incident ray p q this is the incident ray when it when it will hit at the point o then you can see the uh, difference in the medium here air is the medium here glass is the medium when any light rays when it is entering from one medium to another medium due to the difference in speed of light then it will get bent then bending of light it will takes place then it will get refracted this is the ray o o dash is the refracted ray then here this is the normal m n is the normal drawn perpendicular to the glass lab surface a b then here after refract refracted ray when it is passes through passes inside the glass lab then after reaching the outer surface of the glass lab then it will get emerge emerge the ray we will call it as a emergent ray then here again there is a change in medium from glass to air again here bending of light it will take place because of the change in speed of the light this ray we will call it as a emergent ray then here also you we have to draw one more normal m dash n dash then here this normal is drawn perpendicular at the point o dash then the slab perpendicular to the slab dc at the surface dc then here one thing you can observe this i it will indicate the angle of incidence then this r it will indicate the angle of refraction suppose assume you don't have any change in medium air and glass is not there then if any ray incident then it has to pass through it has to follow a straight path instead of bending of light if you are having same medium then the light rays it will pass through the medium maybe this is the actual path of the light rays but here in the case you can see there will be a change in different medium air and glass here glass and air you can see the difference in medium instead of passing through a straight line first it will get refracted inside the glass lab then at the surface of the glass lab it will get emerge then instead of this path it will follow a this path then this this shift we will call it as a lateral shift in the exam they may ask what is mean by a lateral shift shifting of light it will takes place because the, there will be a difference in speed of light in different medium then bending of light it will takes place then after bending the rays it will get emerge therefore you can see the lateral shift in this case this diagram also you you can observe refraction through a rectangular glass lab if it, this is the incident ray then it will get refracted then after reaching the surface it will get emerged let us discuss here why lateral displacement why it will occur lateral displacement depends upon the refractive index of a glass lab already i told when any light rays when it travels from one medium to another medium there will be a change in speed of light it will takes place is nothing but refractive index of glass lab the next one is thickness of the glass lab because of these two reasons you can decide the lateral displacement in a particular glass lab total internal reflection when light goes from a denser medium to a rarer medium it bends away from the normal consider here this is the source of a light when light passes from one medium to another medium then bending of light it will takes place that one we will call it as a refraction this is the source of light when light falls on this surface then there will be a change in the medium then here the light rays it will get refracted then the, the, this refracted ray it will bend away from the normal then here you can observe here angle of incidence it will be equal to angle of refraction 
the angle at which the incident ray causes the refracted ray to go along the surface of the two media parallel is called as a critical angle consider second one here when incident ray when it when it will hit the surface of the two media then instead of refraction it will move along the surface of two media at an angle 90 degree this angle we will call it as a critical angle when in, when the incident ray, incident angle is greater than the critical angle it reflect inside the denser medium instead of refracting this phenomenon is known as a total internal reflection if the angle of incidence is more than the critical angle more than the critical angle means more than 90 degree then here instead of refraction the incident ray it will get reflected within the denser medium that one we will call this phenomenon we will call it as a total internal reflection once again i will explain this and here total internal reflection means if the incident angle otherwise if the incident ray angle is more than the critical angle means more than 90 degree then instead of refraction it will get reflected within the denser medium that process we will call it as a total internal reflection for example this can you can observe in mirages and also optical fibers this also very very important topic this one also you have to remember spherical lenses is transparent medium bound by two surfaces at which of which one or both surface are curved maybe one surface is curved and both the surface may be curved a transparent medium bound by two surfaces that is the transparent medium bound by two surfaces maybe one surface is curved or both the surface may be curved first one is convex lens this is an example of a convex lens thin from the corner thin from the corner and thick at the center and is convex lens is a converging lens converging lens means when parallel rays of light when they will fall on a convex lens after refracting they will meet at a single point that point we will call it as a convergence point that process we will call it as a converging then here in the case of a concave lens this is an example of a concave lens thick from the corner and thin at the center this is the diverging lens a diverging lens means when parallel beam of light rays they will fall on a refracting surface they will get diverge after extending the diverging lines backward then they will meet at a single point at that point you will get an image this is the main two difference between the convex and concave lenses rules for an image formed by a convex lens some rules are there the rules are very important when you are drawing a ray diagram first one a ray of light parallel to the principal axis this is the ray of light parallel to this principal axis of a convex lens always pass through the focus on the other side of the lens always pass through the focus on the other side of the lens first rule is status that when a ray parallel parallel ray the ray is parallel to the principal axis this is the principal axis this is the parallel ray when it hit the convex lens after hitting then it will passes through the focus on the other side of the lens this is the first rule always it will passes through the focus of the other side of the lens that is the rule you have to remember a ray parallel ray of light parallel to principal axis after hitting a reflecting surface refracting surface it will get refracted that refracted ray always it will passes through the focus on the other side of the lens that is the first rule a ray of light passing through the principal focus will emerge parallel to the principal axis after refraction this is the incident ray the incident ray is passes through the focus then after hitting the refracting surface it will get refracted after refracted then it will passes parallel to the principal axis always it will be parallel to the principal axis this is the second rule when a incident ray when it is focused when it is passes through the focus after hitting the surface it will it will travel parallel to the principal axis that is the second rule 
Third one, a ray of light passes through the optic center will emerge without any deviation. If a ray of light, if it is passed through optic center, then the refraction takes place through the optic center only. It will get emerged at the optic center without any deviation. You can see the straight line that it is passes through the optic center. When a ray of light, if it is passes through optic center, then it will get emerged in the same path only. Ray diagram of image formed by a convex lens when an object is at infinity you have to keep the object at infinity the image position at f2 the image you will get at the at the point f2 nature of the image is real or inverted size of the image is point side are highly diminished let us discuss in detail here this is the convex lens here thinner at the edges and thicker at the center then here when parallel beam of light rays if it is falls on the reflecting surface after refraction they will meet at a single point f2 then here this one we will call it as a converging lens because all the light rays parallel beam of light rays they are parallel to the principal axis after refraction they will meet at a single point that process we will call it as a convergent you know according to the law when 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 any ray is parallel to the principal axis after hitting the refracting surface it will get refracted then it will pass us through the focus according to that law here we, we are considering four parallel lines then after hitting the refracting surface they will get meet at the focus f2 at this point only the image it will form then nature of the image is real and inverted because you are getting the image of an object on the screen therefore it is a real inverted means you will get an ulta image size size point size are highly diminished image here because here all the parallel rays they will meet at a single point at the point you are getting an image therefore the size of the image is highly diminished diminished means very very small like a it will appear like a point second one when an object is placed beyond 2f1 here this is the position of an object the object position is beyond 2f1 then here ab it will represent the position of an object here this is the convex lens according to the rules according to the law when any ray if it is parallel to the principal axis always it will pass us to, through the principal focus this is the focus f2 it will it will pass us through the focus this is the parallel ray after hitting the refracting surface then it will get refracted then the, that refracted ray it will pass us through f2 it will pass us through the focus that is the first rule then here if any ray is passed through the optic center after refraction it it will pass us through it will follow the same path it will pass us through the optic center only this is the second one then these two rays they will meet at a single point a dash then a dash b dash is the position of an image then here nature of the image is real or inverted real means the the image you can get on the screen is real inverted means ulta ulta image you will get then size of the image is diminished compared to the size of an object the size of the image is diminished then here the position of an object is beyond 2f1 the image position you will get in between between f2 and 2f2 when object is at 2f1 when the object is exactly at 2f1 then ab represent the position of an object here also consider two rays when any ray is parallel to the principal axis after hitting the refracting surface it will get refracted then it will pass us through the focus that is the one rule then second one if any ray is passes through the optic center then it will follow the same path then it will after refraction it will follow the 
follow the same path it will passes through the optic center only this is the one then both the rays they will meet at a point a dash a dash b dash is the position of an image nature of the image is here also here it is a real and inverted size of the image is same as the size of an object this you have to remember when you when you keep the object at exactly 2f1 then the size of the image and size of the object both also you will get same if you keep the object at the position 2f1 the image it will form at 2f2 only then nature of the image is real and inverted then size of the image is same as that of the size of the object when an object is between f1 and 2f1 the position of an object between f1 and 2f1 then image you will get beyond 2f2 let us discuss in detail here the position of an object between f1 and 2f1 this is the position of an object then here consider two rays one ray is parallel to the principal axis after hitting the refracting surface it will get refracted it will pass through the focus then it will meet at a dash then another ray the ray incident ray if it is passes through the optic center after hitting then it will refract through the optic center only then it will meet at a dash then here a dash b dash is the position of an image here you will get the image beyond 2f2 then here the nature of the image is real and inverted then you are comparing to the size of an image size of the image is larger compared to the size of an object then here the position of an object is in between f1 and 2f1 then you are getting an image at beyond f2 then the size of the image is enlarged compared to the object next one when an object is at f1 the position of an object is f1 the image position is at infinity the image it will form at infinity here also consider two rays one ray the ray is parallel to the principal axis after hitting the refracting surface it will pass through the focus that is one then next one if the ray is passing through the optic center then after refraction it will follow the same path it will pass through the optic center only then here these two rays they will not meet here you can't see there there will be a meeting point but they will meet at infinity therefore the image it will form at infinity nature of the image is real and inverted then here the size of the image is highly enlarged compared to the size of an object when the object is between f1 and optic center this is the position of object is between f1 and optic center then here also consider two rays one ray is parallel to the principal axis always it will pass through the focus this the ray then another one if an if a ray is passes through optic center then it will refract in the same path then here these two rays they will not meet in front of the lens but after extending the after extending the lines then they will meet at a single point that is the position of an image image position on the same side of the lens as the object you are you are getting the image at the same same side of the position of an object nature of the image is virtual and erect because virtual means because you are getting an image on the same side as the object therefore the nature of image is virtual and erect size is highly enlarged see compare here the size of the image is enlarged compared to the size of an object thanks for listening my class send me your valuable feedback if you have any doubt in any topic or question you can ask me please follow all my classes regularly then easily easily you can clear your dt exam which are the topics i have discussed here these topics are very very important therefore revise the topics memorize then easily you can remember in the exam thank you